Hey, this is Steven from Steven's Classic Garage, and welcome to Wednesday, October 30th update. Uh, so this update is just going to kind of be talking about a little bit why you haven't seen anything uh, recently. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I haven't been uh, posting as much, and uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, recently I'm making a kind of a move inside of my work. Uh, to a new position inside my work. I'm basically going from a part-time intern to full-time. So um, basically I need to reapply all over again pretty much. So they also need to do all the paperwork and all the paperwork has to go through. So I'm actually off this week and I decided that it would be best to um, uh, to kind of take this week to clean up the garage so me and my dad are actually uh, revamping the garage obviously you've seen the garage before the garage has never been this dirty or this disorganized reason being is that we're doing a big renovation over here on this side so on this side we're actually um, we actually removed two shelves so this shelf here and this shelf here it used to look like that um, down there so you would see this general split here I don't know it's like 20 inches or something uh, between the two shelves so there used to be two shelves here and basically those two shelves were very underutilized the bottom shelf was kinda just used as storage they were very very underutilized shelves so um, because all we did is we had something on the bottom of the shelf and then that was it and then it was like 10 20 inches of nothing the only thing that was really well used was we had that nut drawer up here that was well used everything else was not so basically what we decided to do is cut those out and then put in a 61 inch Milwaukee from uh, Home Depot uh, uh, 61 inches long 23 inches deep and then like 38 inches tall or something like that uh, this Milwaukee came with a perf board that is um, the same 61 inches and what we're gonna do is we're actually going to install it from this top board here all the way down and it just so happens it was like 23 inches or something like that and uh, from the get-go I could see that this is designed that this was destined to be in that in that space because if you look I have a line that I have to cut today and this is actually the same length from top to bottom. So we're getting rid of any of the non-perf board section. So I'm actually going to, there's some tracks here, because actually this was an adjustable setup. These were on the back of the toolbox, and you could actually move the perf board up and down. But we didn't want that, so we unbolted these guys, and then now we can push it all the way back to where it hits that piece. And I was telling my dad that we should remove that so we could get it back even further because now uh, obviously these bifold doors are going to have to be removed because they can no longer close because the toolbox is sticking out past this this piece right here was where the uh, the door used to close and it's about a couple inches past now if you look um, so these doors are eventually going to go away and we're going to kind of put things uh, elsewhere so um, then this piece is going to go up to the top of this rack here and then go down and then that piece of wood that's sitting on it is going to go down here because it's no longer going to have the spacing required that you could get the the hangers in there so we have to put something here uh, and then it's going to go down there and then we might pull this out one inch just to have it so that that perf board does not take up any of the table space because then otherwise we'll have 22 inches of table space so that's what I'm working on today. I'm working on putting the welding cart away and getting all this situated and then eventually getting rid of these tables this week. So the idea is by the end of this week, the garage is going to be back to where it's open in the floor again. So maybe even more than it used to be. So even more space. So now the issue is now that we have these new components in here, um, and we are getting, uh, now that I'm doing a lot of investigation, we are getting a lot of overspray. Uh, some of it's sticking, 
And also I had some of the rabbit stuff over here and now some of the lenses are cloudy because now they have clear on them. So I'm gonna have to scrub those with the acetone to try to get uh, that off. Uh, hopefully not damage it. So we'll see. Um, I think I can't really, you, you can see it over here also. And here's like some of the lights I had underneath when I was painting it was a really bad idea. And you can see all the overspray and stuff. So I'm thinking it might be the end of spring in the garage without a booth. So I have a couple options that I'm considering. Because uh, here you can see this is the door. This is kind of where I stopped recently because what happens is I sprayed this and it looked good. I had a couple runs so I wanted to repaint it anyways. And I noticed that I had some pit marks here from, uh, you can't really see it, but there's actually Bondo underneath here and there's a couple pit marks there's one there one there that's a deep one so you can see that there's a couple pit marks in the bondo so i'm actually going to have to take it off and then use some bondo there to fill it back in but that's kind of where i left off this is the passenger side door so i still have two fenders uh the uh, the top side of the hood and basically the roof and the rest of the car now the overspray is a big issue, so um, I'm wondering now if I'm going to kind of have to stop that. And uh, so I have a couple options. So number one is I know of two friends that have paint booths now. Uh, one, I know his price. The other one, not so sure. So one of the, so I have a couple options here. Uh, basically, one is use... Uh, one of those paint booths, right, and pay, you know, $100 a day or whatever. Or I can go and buy one of those uh, pump-up uh, kind of bouncer house paint booths, and then I own it. And then basically back over here, I have an RV access where we have our trailer there of dirt bikes that basically we're getting rid of that I've written since I was a kid and we're kind of over it now. So, um, at least, uh, yeah, me and my brother are kind of both over it. So, anyways, uh, so that, uh, what I could do is I can move the trailer forward, but my idea is kind of move the trailer back and then kind of close the gate around it and use that front section of the RV access, put the, put the paint booth there, pump it up. When I need it, paint the car, Otherwise, you know, deflate it, wrap it up, store it in the shed. And it comes, and preferably I would like to find one that has just one fan so I don't have to store two fans. So one that just has one blower fan that you blow it up and then it circulates the air on the inside. It's got all the filters on the outside, sucks it in, it's got nice lighting, all that stuff. Now that is my idea of using uh, that paint booth. Otherwise, uh, there is one paint booth that, like I said, with a friend that I'm kind of interested in. That one is um, close to my work, and I'll be working full-time now. I won't be leaving at 3 o'clock. I'll be leaving at 5.30. So, oh, 3.30. Usually I leave at 3.30 when I was part-time, but now I'll be leaving at 5.30. It's about an hour and 20 minutes worth of traffic getting home until about 7 o'clock, about 7 yeah, about 7 o'clock. So one of the things I can do is instead of driving home, I just drive to the shop. Uh, the car is there. I, you know, I take care of all this. Uh, you know, I, I do, I paint there for that hour and a half or whatever, or I do sanding or whatever, right? And it's, it's a decent paint booth. It's out in a carport, and there's a spot there for a car that's no car there. So it could be something where I could trailer the car over there, but now you have to trailer it. So now you have to trailer it over there and, uh, you know, pay for a trailer, trailer it over there, trailer it back, assemble it, do all that stuff. I would rather not. I would rather just um, have it here and paint it here in the paint booth and not have to trailer it and then I would have basically I have my own paint booth that I could blow up anywhere I want right 
and then also I have some friends that might that use those other paint booths that I could charge less and have them come over here and use the paint booths and basically pay it off pretty quickly and I do have a lot of other projects and then when um, I'm done I could take that paint booth with me uh, when I move and basically be able to use that in the driveway or in a shop or whatever and they're about 800 bucks shipped so they're not they're not that bad so that is a, another option that I'm looking at I'm th kind of leaning towards that option uh, right now so that is kind of the idea uh, we'll see uh, what I come up with that'll all be I'll kind of make that decision towards the end of this week after I've cleaned up uh, the garage here uh, the other option of course is to build a paint booth in here but that's probably not gonna happen so because again this is a shared one uh, this is a shared garage and I would really like it to because uh, also I want to paint my neighbor's truck to be able to kind of roll the car in same thing as a rabbit paint the rabbit just roll the car in not have to worry uh, inside the paint booth and just paint it so I'll make that decision I'll up you guys, update you guys then